Hello, today I want to talk about one-sided limits and let's get started. So just as a review, let's say recall, when we write the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals I don't know, some number L. What we mean is that f of x uh, f of x gets close to L as x gets close to 2. And so we say that this is going to be the fundamental question that we're going to be looking at is trying to calculate this limit in two types of problems. So the first type of problem was a tangent line problem. And here, now I'm not using the formal notation. So this right here is formal notation right here. Okay. So I'm not going to use formal notation, but I am going to describe what is the limiting process for the tangent line problem. We're essentially, if you look back over your notes, recall that what we said was, that the limit of the slope of the secant lines is equal to slope of the tangent line. Okay, and so the picture for this was, suppose you had a point and say this is, you know, x equals a. If you want the slope of the tangent line to the curve at x equals a, look at the slopes of the secant line. So look at the slope of that line. And now look at the slope of this line. And the idea is that the slopes of the secant lines get close to the slope of the tangent line when you're looking at the points as the points get close to x equals a. Okay, so that was the first type of problem. And then the second type of problem was the problem of um, rate of change. Rate of change, and let's put in instantaneous rate of change. Rate of change problem. And what we're saying is that the instantaneous rate of change I'm going to write it a little slightly different, but it's the same. It's the same equation. It's the same statement. The instantaneous, instantaneous rate of change at a point. And remember, it's actually the rate of change of a function of a function at a point is equal to the limit of the average rate of change over an interval over intervals and these intervals are getting closer and closer and closer and closing in on that point so we spent a lot of time on Wednesday looking at limits before we really technically had given notation for the limits because again essentially our focus is going to be on these problems here, rate of change problem and the tangent line problem. That's what we're going to be trying to do. And so far, so, so far, our methods, our methods for finding instant, instantaneous rate of change at a point. So I'm just going to put rate of change at a point and uh, tangent line to the curve at a point. So far, our methods are essentially creating a table and look at values and visual, you know, kind of eyeball it. So I'll just put eyeball it in parentheses. So we looked at a table and we said, what are the values approaching? Right, let me try to, we would 
investigate the question. And here's the question. Um, what is limit x approaches to f of x? So what we would do is we would create a chart and for our chart, we would pick values of x and values of f of x. We would pick values that are getting close to 2. Okay, So maybe we would pick 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. One point nine 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 nine, and we would also pick some values that are larger than two, but are getting close to two. So maybe two point one, and then two point uh, oh one, two point oh oh one, two point oh 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 one. Do you see how these values are getting? Let me draw a picture to show what we're talking about. So if here's 2, now 1.9, maybe this is 1.9, and then this is 1.99, and 1.999, we are approaching x from the left. So for these values here, the top values, for the top values here, we are approaching x from the left because we're approaching or not x, but we're approaching 2 from the left. So we are approaching 2 from the left. Now that's the key. And why do we say from the left? Because if you just look at the picture, these x values are getting closer to 2, and the values are on the left. Now for the bottom here, we are approaching 2. We're also approaching 2, but we're approaching it from the right. Okay, so here we are approaching 2 from the right. And if we just look here, look, 2.1 would be maybe here, and then 2.01, notice that's going to be closer to 2 than 2.1. So 2.01 might be here. And then 2.001, that's even closer and even closer. So we, so again, what would we do? The first step, if we're trying to figure out what's the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, the first step would be to create a table. In our table, we're going to list values of x that are getting close to 2 from the left and from the right. So approaching 2 from the right and approaching 2 from the left. Then we would see we would write down f of x. So what is f of 1.9? What's f of 1.99? What's f of 1.999, right? And we would see, are these f values getting really close to anything? If the f values are getting really close to a number, then we say, aha, we've got our limit, okay? So that is just the approach overall, and it's kind of what we did on on Wednesday, and it's the best thing we've got at this time. This is the best approach currently. So I'll put here currently the best approach. The best approach using a table when you're given a table of values. And we can do the same procedure. We can do the same procedure. Suppose we want the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, and we're given a curve for f of x. So suppose suppose here's 2, here's 1, here's 3. Now, how would we calculate f of x? Well, essentially, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a table, and we're going to look at values that are, and that this, we might not necessarily write the table down, but we're still, in essence, looking at points that are close, points that are approaching two from the left, points that are approaching two from the right, and see what happens to their 
their values under F. So if you look at 1.9, 1.99, 1 1.999. Let's see, I didn't make a one, two, three. So from the left, if we look at 1.9, I don't know what number is that. It looks like, you know, 0.5, maybe it's about 0 0.5. And then 1.99, we're getting, you know, these are all approximately 0 0.5 is what I'll say. They're approximately all 0 0.5, but then I didn't really do a good picture. So let me perhaps draw a better draw a better graph. Okay, so I'm just going to try this. So remember, we're interested in points that are close to 2. So again, I'm just making this up. I'm just making up a problem to show that we can find the limit by looking at the graph. Okay, so now here's 1 and here's 2, 3. Well, that's 4. Five, six, seven. Okay. Okay, so suppose this is my f of x. So here's x and this is f of x. Now when I look at 1.9, now this is 1, this is 2. Look at 1.9, I'm getting something. Do you see how close that is? That's, I don't know, maybe that's 1.9. You know, and 1.99, you can look and you can see that the closer we get to x, the closer we get to 2, the closer these values, the f of x, is getting to 1. Okay, and that's not true, true just on that side. We can look at 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. It's 19 hours. So 2.1, the same thing. This is going to be some number that's slightly above 1, right? And as we get closer to x, to closer to 2 from the right, f of x is going to be coming down to 1. Okay, so let me write that down. So as x gets close to 2, f of x gets close to 1. And this is close, when we say gets close to, We mean it doesn't matter which side you're coming from. If you're approaching 2 from the left versus if you're approaching 2 from the right, you're still having f of x getting close to 1. So from left or right. Okay, and so that's what that picture means. Note, so let me put here warning, warning, warning. So note, do not just say limit x approaches to f of x is equal to f of 2. Because sometimes the limit is equal to f of 2, but sometimes the limit isn't equal to f of 2. And in this case, here's an example where the limit is not equal to f of 2. So in our case, so in the example above, The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to 1, right? f of 2 is actually equal to 2, and they're not the same. We put not equal, right? So you'll get in trouble if you just say, oh, the limit is, let me just see what the value is. Or if you say, let me plug in x. That's something students will write. Let me plug in x equals 2. No, we don't want to do that. Because limits are talking about behaviors, the behavior of f of your function near 2. Not the behavior of the function at 2, but the behavior of the function near 2. Okay? All right. So now, that is we're talking about limit. Now, if we're talking about approaching from the left, now we use this business with the limit as x approaches 2 
with the little plus means we're approaching from the right and limit as x approaches 2 from the left f of x means that x is approaching 2 from the left so for this case right here in this scenario we want x to approach 2 only through values greater than 2. Okay, so what that means in terms of the table is for the table, you would only consider points that are greater than 2, maybe 2.005, right? Because you're approaching from the right. And pictorially, so if we're looking at a picture, that means you're only going to be looking at, this is x equals 2 right here, you're only going to be looking at values from the right, where x is um, larger than 2, x is to the right of 2, okay? And then over here, with this other one, here we want x to approach 2 only from the left. So only through values less than 2. And now, guess what values would you consider? You'd consider values that are strictly less than 2. 1.9, 1.99, 1.999, 1 etc. Right? But they all need to be less than 2. And pictorially, we'd be looking, let's say if this is 2, you'd be looking at values of x that are to the left of 2. And you're approaching from the left. Okay? So that's what we're going for. Now, this right here, so if you're approaching from the right, that is called a right-hand limit. So let's write that. This is called a right-hand limit. And if you're approaching from the left, big surprise, right? It's going to be called a left-hand limit. Okay? Now, our original, I'm just going to put this in blue here. Remember the first that was just limit as x approaches 2, f of x. This is just called a limit. So it's not a right-hand limit. It's not a left-hand limit. It's just a limit. And here's the deal. So here's the fact, which is an important fact. So key fact, the limit as x approaches a, f of x, now a is any constant. So we'll say suppose a is a constant number. Then the limit x approaches a, f of x equals l exactly when two things happen. Number one, the limit as x approaches a from the right, f of x equals l. And number two, limit as x approaches a from the left, f of x equals l. So now, keynote or remember or warning, recall the example of the heavy side function. Okay, so that shows us that limits don't have to always exist. Okay. And in that f was equal to 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, h of x was equal to 1. And so since these were not equal, we say limit x approaches 0, h of x does not exist. Okay, so that was our conclusion, was that the limit doesn't exist because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. Okay. Let's do another example. So let's do another example. And the example I would like to do now is the example of 
we want to calculate the limit as x approaches 2 of the absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. Okay, so we want to calculate So, what is my graph? So the first thing I want to do is my first step, step one, is to graph my function. So in this case, my function is going to be f of x. equals x minus 2 over x, absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. Now, in order to do that, recall that, and this was from, this I guess will be from pre-calculus, if you have the absolute value of x, it's actually equal to a step function. So it's either x or negative x. It's x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than zero. So we're going to use that same approach to say that the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2 or negative x minus 2, right? So it's x minus 2 if x minus 2 is greater than or equal to zero, and it is negative x minus 2 if x minus 2 is less than zero. And now we can rewrite this because what does it mean to have x minus 2 greater than 0? That means x is greater than or equal to 2. And x minus 2 is less than 0. That means x is less than 2. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as f of uh, absolute value, absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 2. And it's equal to 2 minus x if x is less than 2. So now we can use this, plug this in to simplify into our formula for f of x to, to simplify f of x. Okay, so what will we get? So we'll get that f of x, which we said is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2, over x minus 2. Well, it's either going to be x minus 2 over x minus 2 or 2 minus x over x minus 2. And it depends on x. So the top one is the top case. The first case is if x is greater than or equal to 2. And the second case is if x is strictly less than 2. But we know that this first, in the first case, we just have 1. And in the second case, we have negative 1. So this is a variation. So we say note, this is a variation of the heavy side function. Right? Because when we try to graph it, the graph of this function is going to look like um, let's see here. I think I need to make it even longer. Oh, I messed up. Okay, so the graph is going to look like at 2, oh, that's not correct. Just kidding. Okay. So at 2, it's going to be 1. Okay, we've got an arrow there. And coming this way, it's going to be negative 1. We've got an arrow. And we'll have a closed circle here and an open circle here. So the limit as x approaches 2 
from the right side of absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2 is going to equal 1, right? Because here's 2, 2 is here. And as, your, as x gets close to 2, f of x is staying at 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Whereas as x approaches 2 from the left, so we've got x is less than 2, but it's getting close to 2, f of x is constantly equal to negative 1. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is equal to negative 1. Thus, the limit as x approaches 2, f, um, absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2 does not exist. And so here, d and e means does not exist. Okay. All right. So, let's see here. Let's look at another example. So another example would be let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. Now, when we graph 1 over x squared, this is a rational function, right? And the it looks something like this. It has asymptotes at a horizontal. It's 1915. It has a horizontal asymptote. y equals 0, which is the same thing as saying the x-axis. And it has a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is x equals 0, which is the same thing as um, the y-axis. Okay? So what is the limit? This limit does not exist. You can say this equals does not exist. Why? Because as x approaches 0 from the right, 1 over x squared is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's no, there is no real number L where the values of f of x approach L as x approaches 0. And so keep in mind, as x approaches 0, f of x is approaching plus infinity. It's getting arbitrarily large. f of x gets arbitrarily large is a way to say that. It gets larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. Okay? So, another way to say this is um, that 1 over x squared diverges to plus infinity as x goes to 0. So that's another thing we can say, another way we can look at it. Okay. Next problems are really, really important. You want to make sure that you know how to find limits, left-hand limits, right-hand limits, just from looking at a picture. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's going to be nine. Okay. So suppose... You have something that's like that. So that's negative 2, and then 2, right? And then for 2, we're going to go up to okay. and then, ah, just kidding, we're going to go to 3.
Okay, and now we're gonna go up to seven. Four. We're now gonna go up to seven. So we're gonna go back up to, or actually let's go to eight. Why not go to eight? Okay, so I've now carefully drawn my picture. Sorry it took so long. And let's answer some questions. So A, limit as x approaches negative 2 f of x. So this is f of x. And this is x. Okay, so here is negative 2, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look here. x approaches negative 2 from the left, and the limit is x approaches negative 2 from the right. And it looks like as x is approaching negative 2 from the left, the values are getting closer and closer and closer to this point right here. And as x approaches negative 2 from the right, the values are coming are decreasing down to this number right here. So I'm going to estimate this to be 1, 2, 3, 3.75. So that's going to be equal to 3.75. Okay. Now what about, what is f of negative 2? Well, 3.75. Let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 and this value here, of f of x. Now, as x approaches, so here's 0. This is 0. And as x approaches 0 from the left, f of x is getting close to 7. Do you see that? The f of x is getting close to 7. If you take a value here, right? So these are the, the f of x values are getting up to 7. So, and the same thing is true as x approaches 0 from the right, the f of x values are increasing to 7. This is going to equal 7, and this is the same thing as f of 0. No, it's not. What's f of 0? f of 0 is 5, right? So were you paying attention? Did you catch that? In this case, f of 0 is not the same as the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. Last thing, let's the limit as x approaches of f of x. Now, this limit is not going to, we're going to say, not exist. Why? Because the limit, let's see here, so f of 2, what's f of 2? It's 3, right? What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? So this limit, x approaches 2 from the left, F approaching 3. Now, what as x of right? Find limit x approaches 0 from the left. Absolute value of x over x. Limit x approaches 0 from the right. Absolute value of x over x. Limit x approaches 0. Absolute value of x over x. And then the limit as x approaches 2, absolute value of x over x. Okay. And I can tell you right now, so I'm not going to show you how to work them, but you should pause the video right now and then figure out how to work them. And check back. I'm going to write the answers. This last one is 1. This one is does not exist. The second one is one. And the first one is negative one. Okay. All right. Hope you have a good weekend.